Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Ash, and I am here with a review for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade: Wrath of the Mutants on Xbox. Now, this is developed by Cradle Games and Raw Thrills, and published by Game Mill Entertainment, who were kind enough to send me a copy for this video review. So, huge thank you to them for that. It came out onto Xbox on the 23rd of April 2024, as well as other platforms, PC, PlayStation, stuff like that. Now, this is a sort of reimagining, remaster, re-release of the 2017 arcade game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade. Now, this is a sort of classic beat-em-up style game that you could play with up to four players. Battering your way through tons of different enemies, fighting bosses at the end of it, uh, levels and stuff like that. Very much like the old Turtles games, but with like 3D models. And it was based on the 2012 cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Now, while this looks and everything exactly the same, the gameplay is the same, it has improvements compared to the original arcade release, including three additional stages and six additional boss battles, as well as a little bit of... Uh, rearranging of uh, there's a couple of bosses that were in one level that have been moved to another to make way for new bosses and stuff like that so there are some other changes in there as well now you pick one of the turtles you can play this up to four players locally so all of you can play each of the turtles each one has their own special move which you can build up like a power bar to unleash like your turtle power attack you'll Fight your way through tons of different enemies. Each level has a like a mid-level boss and a end-of-level boss. Some of them are really well-known characters. You've got your Bebops, your Rocksteadies, and stuff like that. However, there are some characters that are much more obscure from the 2012 series that I'd honestly never heard of here. Now, the game itself isn't overly long. Now, one thing I do like about this game, you can attempt... All of the stages in any order bar the last one. So you have to basically complete all of the levels and then it unlocks like the Shredder boss level. So you can pick and choose which order you do these in. You can go back and replay them at multiple difficulty levels basically to get the best score and stuff like that. Now, the game itself will take you just like about an hour and a half at most to complete. It's not an extremely long game. It's not overly difficult either. And the environment. I like the environment. I like some of the boss designs and stuff. The characters look like the TV show they're meant to look like. However, the gameplay is a little bit lacking. So you've got a standard attack. You've got a jump. And then you've got like your special abilities. Um, button. And you can also pick items up in the levels. Although there's not a lot to pick up there's sometimes like bins you can throw and stuff like that and there are like pick up items so there's like pizzas that replenish your health like a smoke bomb that like stuns enemies a shuriken and there's also these assist ally tokens you can pick up which will like spawn some characters that'll come onto the screen temporarily do some damage then uh, leave now all in all though it's not a bad game it is a little short for my liking, but this is a arcade port, so I get the length of time it's going to be. Like, it's not going to be like 20 hours masterpiece because it's just not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to bother uh, putting that out in the arcade. There's just not a lot to, to replay, bar playing it on the harder difficulties, which I don't think give a lot to it. They, they don't make it too much harder. And all the turtles sort of play the same, like a bar in their special abilities, which aren't that different anyway. There isn't a lot to it. Now, I did have fun. I'm not going to lie. I did have fun playing through this game on my own and with my kids. And we enjoyed it. It also features like the actual TV talent. So you've got like Seth Green. Gilbert Gottfried, Sean Austin. So, like, you've got Samwise Gamgee in this game. That gives it automatic, like, brownie points in my book, which is cool. So it does have that authentic, like, actual tie-in feel to it. It's just a shame it's so short and there's no unlockable characters or, like, extra levels to unlock or anything like that. Once you've played through it once, you've seen it all, 
you could maybe play through it just to sort of get a better score or something like that, but there's not much point to it. Now, I definitely recommend this game if you like the old school Turtles arcade games, or you like like beat em up arcade games in general, Streets of Rage and stuff like that. While I don't think it stands up compared to the recent Shredder's Revenge and some of the older classics, honestly, it's not that bad a game. It's just a little light around the edges in content. It's short, but sweet. So if you can get it at a good price, normally it's priced at twenty four ninety nine. That's not too bad, but for like an hour and a half's worth of content, if you don't play it again, you may want to wait to pick it up in a sale. Now on Xbox, it's playable on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC with Xbox Play Anywhere, which is fantastic. And it's optimized for Series X and S with 4K resolution and 60 FPS. So if you're a Turtles fan, definitely check this one out. Fun, but short. One of Game Mill's better releases recently. They've had a bit of an up and down year in the past year with some of their releases, but this one is actually fun. It's just it just doesn't last long enough, which is a shame, unfortunately. But hit that like button, guys. Hit subscribe, and we'll see you soon for more gaming content. Bye for now.